As always, my name is Keith here with Shark Indicators. We've been involved in the Ninja Trader ecosystem since 2011, providing tools like Bloodhound and Blackbird that help traders be more productive and in control of their own trade systems. We're always looking for ways to add to the trader's toolkit and Shark Week is a big part of that mission. Before I pass it off, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. Futures, foreign currency, and options trading contain substantial risk and is not for every investor. And as always, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Now, you probably know Rob Mitchell from the Oil Trading Room and IndicatorSmart.com. At various times, Rob has been the largest e-mini S&P trader in the world and has won the prestigious Robbins World Cup e-mini trading championship. He has been a trading system developer for nearly three decades and is a proven researcher, trading educator, presenter, and mentor, helping others to achieve their dreams as traders. So with that, Rob, go ahead and unmute and share your screen. We can get started. Thanks for the intro, Keith. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I, I will be uh, held to that standard. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thanks for coming in today. Thanks, Keith. Um, for doing this. Thanks to Shark for putting this on. Um, I realized when I started putting this webinar together, I haven't done a webinar for a year. And so it's kind of cool to, um, to do that and to uh, share um, every so often. Um, most of my focus is on uh, developing trading systems and methods. And I teach that daily in the trading room. And so um, I have a lot to share in that respect. Yeah, so today's presentation, how to develop winning trading systems for 90 plus percent theoretical win rates and future success, yeah. And what we're gonna cover is all different ways that you get to a place like that. Yeah, and I think that you'll enjoy that. Yeah, there's the risk disclosure uh, also, and uh, we already covered that uh, with Keith. And so, um, don't use the grocery money. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. <laughs> You're awesome too, man. <laughs> Don't use the grocery money for trading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. At the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you some important resources. So stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to cover a really wide, broad strokes of uh, topics today related to trading and trading systems, their design implementation trading success. I'm going to show you methods, tools, techniques, and indicators that can be implemented to create literally thousands of trading systems. Literally. Yeah. There's like no end to it. <laughs> you have 432 trillion trading systems at your disposal by the time we finish here today. And you only need one. Yeah. So keep that in mind. But it's super important that traders find the one that works for them, you know? And after you've gone down the journey and everything else and you get to what works for you um, it, and everything becomes clear, um, it's amazing because you probably already knew it in the beginning, <laughs> but you still have to take the journey, you know, super important. So my general approach today is gonna be, I'm gonna show you a bunch of different things that I've been doing as a trader. And like I said, I haven't done a webinar for a year. And so I'm just taking things that are kind of like on my current palette, if you will. And we're going to make a painting of it during the webinar. Yeah. And so if you like what I show you and you'd like to learn more, I'll give you some resources at the end also for that. You know, I'm going to cover a lot. So um, I apologize perhaps for uh, giving you so much and not focusing narrowly, but I think it's important to take some broad strokes for a webinar like this, um, and then we get down to specifics in the trading rooms. Yeah, so so what are some of the things we're going to cover today? Some key concepts we're going to cover. What factors are so fundamental to the way markets work that they're always true? Yeah, what's just so fundamental, the least common denominator is another term for that, yeah. What's the difference between indicators that are random and not? Because yeah. a whole heck of a lot of them are, and that's important to know, but we'll touch on that, yeah. What makes an indicator have probabilities associated with it, yeah? 
In other words, it's predictive or it can uh, tell you something about the future with a known number or uh, outcome. Yeah. Super important. Um, what is market mapping and why is it a real game changer? You know, market mapping is so cool. And I'm going to show you some cool examples with that too. You know, what kind of factors go into the very best trading systems? What kind of thinking sits behind a trading system that's really awesome? You know, what kind of factors sit on that? You know, well, might not always be what you think. You know. um, and how can you build trading systems that are likely to work in the future? And all of the concepts that we're going to cover today have that at their core, you know, likely to work in the future. And you know, kind of summing all that up, what's the difference that makes a difference? Yeah. So uh, for this webinar, it was the first time I ever did this. I have put together some basic key system building words you know, that we're gonna touch on. You know. uh, we're gonna start with shapes, yeah. What kind of shapes do the indicators make on the screen? Like I'm, you know, talking basically about like geometry there, or shapes, triangles, or you know, triangles the most basic um, two dimensional shape that's closed, yeah. You know? And shapes that are uh, happen in price action, or shapes that happen in the market as a whole. We're going to touch on both of those things. You know? Components of a system, <clears throat> excuse me, that each stand on their own. Yeah, they're autonomous. They stand on their own. Yeah, and if you choose from the right kinds of components, it actually becomes difficult to build a lousy trading system. Yeah. We're going to touch on that. Um, something that I call quadrants, different types of components that you can put together that will work together and not be correlated or, or uh, be the same metric. Like sometimes you'll see somebody uh, have different indicators on their screen and the indicators are doing the same thing. I don't really recommend that. Yeah. You shouldn't have like, oh, you got a, you know, stochastic, a MACD and a momentum all on the, you know, they're probably all telling you the same thing. And in certain cases, depending on a bar type and everything else, it might not be telling you anything at all. Yeah. So we're gonna talk a little bit about sequencing, the order in which indicators, price action, or the market fires. That's a big one, actually. When you start coding stuff like in Bloodhound, that can become an issue. You know, because sometimes something comes before, something comes after, they might not exactly line up. Anybody who's done it knows. And so we'll touch on that. I've never heard anybody talk about that before. Super cool stuff, you know, so. Uh, we're going to talk about mapping the market, how to get a statistical uh, for a knowable outcome. Yeah. We're going to talk about uh, context, the situation in which all the above stuff occurs, and uh, that giving you an idea what the market's trying to do. Because if you understand what the market's trying to do, everything changes from that. Everything changes. Yeah. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Bayes' theorem, how sequences, component shapes, all that stuff, context, quadrants, benefit from each other and result in improved performance in a system yeah, or a trading method. So some fundamental factors. The single most fundamental factor in building a trading system is geometry or shapes. It's the least common denominator as we've already touched on. Yeah. There are shapes in price action yeah, on your chart. And there's shapes in the indicators. There's shapes in the day. They shape themselves in certain things over and over and over again. You know? And <clears throat> by the end of the day, you have a certain shape. You can predict what those shapes will be. We're going to cover some of that too. The market divides itself into different segments you know, in time or in range or other, other factors. Yeah. So if you start your science of trading with shapes, everything can be defined based on the shapes as a least common denominator. <clears throat> and then if things start changing, you know it immediately. You know? But the shapes, they never change. It's always the same thing over and over again. We have a, uh, actually it's built into uh, Bloodhound. When you get your Bloodhound, it's got a, a tool in there called the price action swing. I think it's under a little bit different name, but price action swing. 
Um, you know, back in like 2014, we mapped out the price action swing and we did distributions with it on various charts, five brick chart, 10 brick chart, 20 brick chart. That, those shapes, those magnitudes have not changed at all since we first did them eight years ago. Now, every once in a while, I'll go back and redo it, redo the distributions, all the same, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Doesn't matter if the market has, you know, 70 tick range day or if it has $15 range day, um, those numbers stay constant all the time. That's amazing. That's a form of mapping, by the way. Yeah. So if you don't have this um, specifically, it really becomes impossible to define what you know. But when you know that the market falls into these shapes and these um, patterns, um, that you do by mapping, then you really have a pretty solid idea of what the market does or is doing at any given time, at least way ahead of anybody else that's out there. So, you know, uh, this chart right here, <clears throat> just taking this basic idea, patterns of the geometries of the price and other indicators cause various relationships of going with or against. You know, I, they might be going with a trend or, you know, here you're getting, you know, lower red reversal bars. This is like a Renko. This is smart super Renko. This Renko has certain kinds of capabilities. Um, it is a non-random um, bar type. It has distributions that occur over and over again. They're extremely consistent, just like what we talked about with the PAS. Same things. Yeah. Utterly consistent. It's, it's jaw dropping how consistent it is. Yeah. In, other, in, in fact, it's a better, more perfect statistical distribution than like a market profile, way more consistent. So the patterns happen over and over and over again. <laughs> and so you, you want to make sure what you're feeding your indicators is clean stuff like that. It's not random stuff. Yeah, so, so each of these sets of relationships can be mapped to have known probabilities or outcome levels in advance. Yeah, and so you know what shapes are likely or that can occur or don't occur or are normal or abnormal. We'll touch on that too. Yeah, so this is just like you could put a zigzag tool on here and it would show you uh, basically what I drew on there. Yeah, zigzag patterns. In fact, the first studies that I did with this, I hired a guy, a programmer in Florida, super smart guy, because I couldn't find anybody who could really do it to quantify the distribution on these zigzag patterns. This would have been back way before. Um, this, you know, would have been back in 2009, I think. Yeah. So zigzag patterns can be analyzed in terms of the depth and width, whether they're inside or outside, to perform, uh, form a variety of what we call pattern classifications. Yeah. And you get the same thing on the indicators. You get these triangles on the indicators. Yeah. Triangles on the indicators. And then those make shapes. Some of the shapes are inside other shapes. Like this is a little bit of a triangle that's happening inside this, this prior leg. Or these legs, after having that long leg right there, you get two legs inside that prior one. That happens all the time. This is uh, a situation that is abnormal. And then it normalizes. When you get the long leg, you get the counter move. Yeah. Oh, you say two legs inside the prior structure is what we call that. Uh, we'll cover a little bit more on that um, in a minute. So how do you map an indicator? So we can turn an indicator or price action or shape into a known probability. For example, in panel two of the chart we just looked at with the trap trader oscillator on there, we've, I've been uh, developing that for about 12 years. It's this guy right here. This is an order flow indicator. A lot of people use things like ladders or stuff like that. This takes all that stuff so you don't have 23 trillion numbers on your screen and you just see what it is at a glance. You know, just see what it is at a glance. So I've been developing this thing for about 12 years um, every day, watching it and refining it. You know. So a pattern on that indicator that we call the three dot pattern. I've been doing that forever. That's one of like 40 or 50 patterns that we have on this thing. Um, is associated with continuation on the chart at least 75% of the time historically. Yeah. So that's, you map that 
you know, go through and you actually mark them out. Yeah. And we're marking this out with uh, something that we call trade markers. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, and so you mark out these three dot patterns. The three dot pattern is if you get a lower dot and the next one's inside, you get three lower dots. If you get uh, two dots and the next one's inside, you get higher dots. If you get two lower dots and you get another one that's inside that long leg right there, you get three lower dots and three lower dots. This is another pattern we call a 3DV, but I'm not marking that. I'm only marking that one pattern, that one pattern only, and I'm doing it without regard to trend or anything else. Up, down, this way, that way. Um, these are sells, these are buys when it's going higher, it sells when it's going lower. I mark them out <clears throat> and uh, then that gives me a statistic. I'm mapping the indicator for that specific pattern. Yeah. And so I ran this uh, for this day and we've been running three dot patterns for years and years and years. So we know um, it's generically like 75%, but it's actually more than that these days. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you why. Um, so this, this one came up at 85% here. Yeah. 85%. Just three dot patterns without regard to anything else. It just stands on its own. Yeah. 85% to one, uh, one bar and 48% to two bars. Yeah. And this would be the result for the day. 85% for one. Yeah. So, like I said, we've been doing that forever, thousands and hours of screen time and trading rooms. And so we map that out. And so is that a system? Well, it could be, but I don't really think of it that way. I think of it, it's a context. It's order flow being mapped onto price structures, specific price structures, yeah. And so um, we didn't do it to build a system. We did it to establish that there's a pattern on the indicator, on the order flow on the indicator um, without regard to anything else. That's important, yeah. And it stands on its own. It stands on its own. Could it be a system? Sure, it could. But I can also throw it into um, a bunch of other things. But because I make that and it stands on its own, um, I can use that in conjunction with other things that are also predictive. Yeah. So generally, we consider that 75%, it's actually higher. Yeah. And we got like 85%, somewhere in there. Do I really care if it's 85% or 92%? Or, no, I don't really care. I just want to make sure it's above 75 I could go as low as 68, but I like 75 because two 75s are 90% to follow through. Yeah, you know, if I got two of them. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting that. <clears throat> and that way I don't get all caught up in a bunch of mathematics that I don't need to be doing. You know, so I don't accept anything unless it's at least 75% when I'm mapping an indicator. That's just my rule of thumb. Um, some people will disagree with me. They'll go, no, well, you can use 68. And I'm like, yes, you can. Yeah. But I like 75. And I'm and particularly so if I've been mapping this thing for the last eight years in the trading room. Well, not quite eight years, probably about six years on this indicator in the trading room. And it's always better than 75%. Then I got a pretty solid idea in my head that it's 75% uh, or better to follow through. Like I said, recently in the last year, that's probably closer to 85. But I just want to know, does it meet the 75% criteria? No. So I could have made the, could we have made the test better? Yeah. But all I want to do is establish that uh, baseline. So then I can take that 75% and I can combine it with other patterns or factors that are uncorrelated. That's super important right there, by the way. They're not, the, it's not a, stochastic momentum and a MACD, and they're all saying the same thing. Yeah, that's correlated as all get out. Yeah, all based on price, 
all based on oscillations. They're not giving you different results. If you did a statistical test to see if those three things on your chart were statistically different, I guarantee you there is no statistically significant difference between any of them. Wow. Well, so you'd probably, knowing that, maybe want to reduce it down to a really good indicator that has known outcomes, right? So there was a, a Methodist minister named Reverend Bayes, and he came up with this mathematical formula that a lot of statisticians, it's a thorn in their side, because it really works. I mean, it really works. <laughs> Here, I'll say it again. It really works. <laughs> Though so Bayes says if I combine two 75% pattern, I'm not going to get into the math of it. I don't have to. Yeah. Just easy peasy. Yeah. If I get two 75s, I should get 90. If I get three of them, I get 96. Yeah. So as long as <laughs> as long as I didn't accept anything less than 75, and I got two of these things happening on my screen at the same time, doesn't matter what they are, and they're uncorrelated. <laughs> and 90% to follow through. Because I don't like trading systems that only win 65% of the time. Why? Because trading system that has 65% win rate has high equity variance and has a high probability to fail. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you get 96%, the probability that your system is going to fail is really low. This is why there's three panels in the chart that we looked at, you know, three panels, one, panel two, panel three. You know, each of these contributing at least 75%. There's actually a lot more there than that, but, and you're banging like 96. Does that mean you get it every time? No. no. In my recent Traders World Magazine article, how to use smart momentum like a pro, we covered a concept called the smart momentum nose. People in the room today even saying that. The smart momentum nose. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? We've mapped it out. It's predictive. You know. And then there's another concept called smart momentum pulling. We'll touch on those. Yeah. So if we take these concepts and combine them with the three dot pattern, pulling and smart momentum nose. Now, the 3D pattern is in panel two, the trap trader oscillator. That's your order flow component. You know, we can get a better result. We might expect if we had two 90% inputs, we, or I, that was supposed to be 75, yeah. 75% inputs, we'd expect 90, yeah. And so in the article, um, I did a test in the article. It was like a lot of days in that test. And um, I uh, was 82% uh, 80 on the article. And then I did that one a minute ago that we just looked at, that's 85%, you know, 85%. So if I run the test for the two separate inputs, I'll get the uh, result as follows. It's a three dot pattern that's going with the smart momentum only, just those two components. Just those two components, you know? The smart momentum is predictive. I didn't state any numbers on it. You know? I, we did a number on the, on the uh, trap trader oscillator, and this is a result that you get you know, for the day that I did this. So this is a uh, trade marker report. It's a three dot pattern and smart momentum slope only. The smart momentum knows is the concept. If you want to learn more, I think um, go to the Traders World article and read that. It's like a short article shows cool stuff that you can do with momentum. Yeah. And on this one, the uh, first target is 100%. Would I expect it to be 100% in the future? No. No. But I expect that when I'm combining those two concepts, um, three dot pattern with the momentum that I'm gonna get a high result in time, over time. So by doing the Bayes combination um, with already established known 
statistical outcomes. I got 100% result. And over the um, magazine article or the um, uh, earlier uh, report that we showed, um, we got the following. This is pretty crazy. We got a 100% result instead of like an 82 or 85% result. We traded roughly one third as much. We increased the expectancy by close to three times and we got roughly the same overall profit. You know, just by combining those. You know, that's pretty amazing. You know, using Bayes' theorem you know, and, and using it correctly. <laughs> and you got to use it correctly. So this is how we map indicators. Can anyone do this? Yeah, but finding the patterns with these kinds of outcomes takes uh, skill and time. Like I, I commented earlier, we've watched these patterns every day in the trading room forever, for years and years. And we don't have to think about them like rigorously because we just know what they are. And so we got like a lot of these different kinds of patterns um, that we've developed in time. In fact, some people harass me because I um, see so many patterns and that's because that's what I do. You know, I find patterns, I'm a pattern matching machine, <laughs> can't help it. Um, so what are the various categories that you can do this kind of stuff in? Yeah. So there's four basic quadrants or categories of trading indicators that can lead to the kind of success that we're talking about here. Yeah, I call it the four quadrants. There's actually more than that. There's actually more than that. So the first panel, well, panel one, you know, price action and trend. Yeah, there's other uh, things in that panel, um, but those are your main ones. Yeah. Like the background color on the, chart might have been an order flow metric. Yeah. So price action and trend panel one, just in general, panel two, the trap trader oscillators order flow. Yeah. Panel three is the momentum and panel four, which there isn't a panel four, is the background color of the chart, as I mentioned a minute ago, order flow momentum. Order flow momentum is different than order flow trapping or leading. And so there are patterns in that as well. We're not going to cover today. So you can also add another basic component that looks at the market from the outside, support and resistance. All these things are inside going out. Yeah, they're inside going out. Yeah, you could call them pushing. They're pushing yeah, in a direction. But on these guys, support resistance and targeting, I call it pulling. Yeah, and especially when I start talking about mapping, you can start talking about knowing what's going on in a huge uh, range. Yeah, sometimes like, you know, a couple dollars you know, in crude oil, a couple, couple thousand dollars of range. And it'll persist out to that. And so when you get that, you trade in that direction with these high probability signals and you, you just take them as they come. That's the general idea. So um, this is these are the panels. Yeah, panel one is price action. You get support, resistance, and targeting. There's some of these levels on the panel. Yeah, different levels. You know. The trend. This is, we call that the smart price band, tells us what the trend is. That's one way of doing it. Support resistance, the price action, the bars themselves and the trend. Yeah. The background color is order flow momentum. Yeah. Uh, this guy here is order flow and order flow momentum can also be used in that way. Let me see your three dot patterns. Yeah. Three dot patterns on this chart. Boing, boing. Yeah, with the momentum. Yeah. And you can build, you know, some insane number of systems off of just this combo alone before you even get into the mapping. I really like it when something's pulling though. Yeah. So, so with the four quadrants and the outside component, support, resistance, targeting, or mapping, 
and a few good stats, you can literally build thousands of trading systems. Yeah. That trap trader oscillator, there's probably about 50 patterns on there. I say 40 there. There's so many, I don't even count them anymore yeah. that are usable. Why is that important? Like I said, you find one that you can see. Oh, with, when people are learning uh, this kind of stuff, I tell them, trade what you can see because you might not see it. Then when you see it later, maybe that's your thing. Yeah. But you trade what you see don't try to trade what you can't see. And that's a problem with having a trading system rammed down your throat is that you can't see stuff. So it's real important to trade what you see. And then as you develop as a trader, maybe you see it differently. Yeah. Well, I got about a dozen or more patterns in the uh, smart momentum. And then I got basic uh, mapping stats for price action patterns. And when you combine all that together, it's like staggering what you get. Yeah. So, what this means is if you combine factors that we've shown here, it'll be difficult to build a trading system that doesn't work. I'm gonna say that again. It will be difficult <laughs> to build a trading system that doesn't work. Does that mean that you might not screw it up in some other way? So I can assure you that we can all do that. Yeah. Well, you know a lot of people and it takes time to develop this as well in your development as a trader you have a trading system that works perfectly well but you can't implement it that's why it's important to trade what you see as well i should even say and beyond trade what you see trade what you understand yeah this is because the components are built from the ground up on the most basic factor which is just the geometry and the triangles that we started with will charts always be made up of triangles you betcha <laughs> Although who knows in this world that we live in, <laughs> maybe it won't. <laughs> yeah. So I don't recommend that you, um, I don't re recommend that you do things that are not consistent with that. Yeah. Super important. Super important. Um, I don't recommend it because with the kind of capability that we're talking about, the putting the system together, the quadrants and the mapping and everything. You want to focus just on that one thing and certainly do, uh, just one thing before you go to a second or third thing. Yeah. So first do one thing, become an expert at it, and then expand. You can start to expand your repertoire from there. Don't take on five things all at the same time. Why? Because until they're utterly distinct in your mind, um, until they are utterly distinct in your mind, your mind will chunk them all, all together. One of the parts of what we were saying is each has to stand on its own. Yeah. Each of the concepts has to stand on its own. Yeah. Super important. So are there other things you can map? Yeah, you bet. So you can map the whole day. You know, and we do. We use maps that cover the shape of the day, the shape that it's likely to take based on the whole day or based on parts or segments of the day. And when you combine that with the above, you get a working model or hypothesis for what the market's trying to do. And when you work from that point of view, everything changes because you're literally working on the market in the future. In the future. Whereas most market participants are only reacting. This is also a big key thing with trading. No. No. So Albert Einstein famously said, you cannot solve a problem on the level of the problem. What did he mean by that? You always have to be a level above where you're operating at. Yeah. Otherwise you're reactive. Yeah. You're you're in it. Yeah, you're part of a hive mind. <laughs> you can't see. You have no perspective. So if you're not, it'll be a struggle at best. Yeah. Super important to get at least one level above where you're operating at. So that's what we uh, teach. If you know which side you're trading from first, the maps can help you with that. The trend, knowing what ranges you're expecting can help with that. We'll, we'll do some examples of that in a minute. And you have some reasonable semblance of an idea or hypothesis of what the market's trying to do. Yeah. And that, um, that can change, of course, but you always have a working hypothesis as you're trading. That's super important. When I say super important throughout this webinar, I'm saying that these are the key points that make the difference, that makes the difference, yeah, with stuff. In all my years of doing this. So just sharing that with you. Simple example of how this uh, 
uh, how the market changes mood after a certain time of day by range and extension. So let's look at an example of how I might map something. I'm just going to do it super simple. This is an excerpt of uh, what we call the super map. I didn't put the whole thing there. No. So what this is saying is, so this is, um, this is A period. It's the first um, 30 minutes. And B is the second 30 minutes. C is the fourth or the third one, 30 minute interval. Yeah. And, um, and this tells me the ranges that I'm expecting. This is, I think this is from today. Yeah, I did this for today. So 165 ticks of range I expect in that uh, first 30 minutes. You know, it was zero before that. And the market opens up and it goes 165 is what we expect. You know? And then in the next period, I expect to have 246, 288, et cetera. But what I did on this uh, was I put percent of the whole. So this is, this is interesting, this uh, line right here, this is an example of mapping. And what it's telling me is that in A period, I expect to have 44% of the range that I will have at the end of the day. That's this number all the way over here, yeah? Well, how do I know what that number is over there? I don't, <laughs> but I know there's a good, pretty good chance I'm at 44% of it by the uh, end of the first period. So if I want to, I could project that. This is a form of mapping, yeah? By the end of B period, it's 65% of the whole. Oh, 246. Actually today, I think we got a little bit behind right there and then we played some catch up. Not the kind of catch up that you put on a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, uh, by a C period, the third hour and a half, 76% and then by D period 85 and then E period 86. Well, look what's happening here. In the first four periods of the day, I've burnt 85% of my range. So what does that mean? If I get out of bed late <laughs> and I'm trading for range expansion, I'm playing only with 15% of what was there. Yeah. Do I wanna do I wanna um, um, be trading? for only 15% of the available take? <laughs> well, you know, you decide, right? But this is what I call the range expansion period of the day. 85% of the day's range or 86% is baked by D or E period. Yeah. Uh, another stat that we have here, I really love this one. It says that B period, the second 30 minute period of the day was going to expand the range, is going to be outside A and expand the range at 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100 during the range expansion period of the day. That's pretty cool. A C period going to expand at 80% and the D period going to expand at 70%. Could I combine that with something else and get a Bayes? Uh, kind of thing out of it. Yeah. Could I make it even better? Now, I know B period is going to expand at 100 percent. I know C period is going to expand at 80 percent. D period expand at 70 percent. Look how the drops off right there. 20 percent it's going to expand in E. Whoa. Doesn't mean it won't happen, but it means it's 80 percent against. Yeah. I burnt 86 percent of the range by the I burnt 85 percent of the range by the end of that last period. There's 15 percent left and then it drops from you know, 70 to 20%. Well, I might want to be aware of that. Well, this is mapping. There's a lot of different things I could do on this. So I'm just showing you that one. Yeah. So what I did here was I added these prior ones. This 100% uh, this, uh, says, oh, we're going to take out the prior one at 100%, but I'm also going to take out the prior two at 90% and the prior three and the prior four and the prior five at 90%. That tells me that I'm also going to expand in the same direction. <laughs> now I know three things, yeah. I'm going to expand, but I'm also going to expand in the same direction. This one says 80 for the next two. It's 80 right there. If I put those in bays, I think I get 92%. 280 is 92%. 275 is 90, right? 280 is um, 92%. 92% I'm going to expand the range. Wow, that's cool, yeah. And in this period, 70% and 90%, if I put those two in bays, I'm going to get like 94% somewhere in that period. But, but I expect that big time. I expect it big time. So 
if I'm trading, for example, if I'm trading in B period and, um, or if I'm trading in A period, I know the B period is going to expand the range. I know it's going to do it in the same direction as it did from minus one to A. Yeah, at 100%. Once a B period takes out that A period extreme, I expect that thing to trend for another 30 minutes. <laughs> now, this is mapping. This is mapping. I expect it to trend for another 30 minutes. Wow, that's pretty cool. So um, those are just some mapping uh, kinds of concepts that we do. There's a lot of uh, other things that we know with mapping that make it really cool. Yeah. So another thing that can help with your trading a lot is sequencing. And I mentioned that a little bit earlier. When you develop a trading system or code something in Bloodhound, for example, one indicator might start signaling before the other. Or you know, sometimes it'll come later in another indicator that you're using for your inputs will come later or earlier or, you know, and if you get three of them, it could be all kinds of different combinations. They could be offset by three, four bars, stuff like that. That can make uh, coding really complicated in various cases. So if, if you could have a system, you know, if you got a system, it might work great with a tiny little variation in sequencing, or it might, uh, miss altogether might not work at all yeah it becomes super important but that can really be a thorn in your side when you're coding because then you got to use the you know counters and all kinds of stuff it can get really crazy so that's why a lot of times a discretionary trader can do amazingly well because their brain can just chunk all that together uh, over a coded system so this is usually this kind of thing is usually because of sequencing but it, i've never heard anybody really talk about sequencing as a super important topic and um because you know you, then you have to ask the question well if this one comes first and then that one comes and then this one comes and that one comes how, how different is the result or can i somehow just chunk them all together into this kind of blob of workingness <laughs> yeah so so in the Traders World article we discussed earlier, we talked about the uh, also a hook and pull concept. Yeah. And again, I think it's Traders World um, um, uh, number 86, issue 86 and 85. And um, if you need a link to that, I could probably find it. Yeah, so uh, the uh, thing was called a hook and pull. I'm gonna cover a little bit more about hook and pull. I probably need to kick up the pace of this webinar here. Uh, maybe we're going to go in high speed here uh, so I don't get too far behind. So hook and pull is defined in the articles where the smart momentum is constant over an interval of an inside hook on the trap trader oscillator. And that's what that would, this is what this would look like. Yeah. See how the momentum there is going constant. You know, there's a red dot there and a green dot there. It's constant over that interval. And I'm hooking inside that on the trap trader oscillator. In fact, I'm leading out. Super high probability trade. I love these. I love them. Hook and pull. Well, that's interesting, yeah. And we'll look at, um, so sequencing gets involved with the hook and pull. Yeah. So I could sequence out a little bit earlier instead of it having to be like over the entire interval, I could accept something that's happening uh, during the interval. Yeah. See how this, See how this whole interval, that dot happens right there. It's over the entire interval and this hook is happening right in the middle of it. That's a classic uh, hook and pull. But what if I shifted the definition, the criteria of that sequencing a little bit to the left, like one bar to the left? Well, suddenly I got like so many signals I don't know what to do with. Yeah, I'm the trend and counter trend. So this one happens over the entire pattern. This one happens on the right edge. This happens over the entire pattern. This is the classic hook and pull that we look at first. So this is uh, the concept of sequencing. Super important, small little change, huge difference. Yeah. So by varying the sequencing slightly of a different pattern classifications within entirely different shapes is, and results. Each of the above sequence out a little differently from the one basic shape that we began with, the hook and pull, classic. And we created a ton of signals off of that. So that's a nice takeaway for you for the webinar, yeah?
little bit of uh, shift in sequencing. Um, and I'll uh, describe a little bit more about that because this was a huge uh, uh, jump for me when, when I realized how this works. Yeah. The key point is it's super important to classify each of the patterns you're trading as specifically as you can. And this leads to another system building point. The very best systems are built not by tightening rules to confine a pattern, but by loosening them. <laughs> right? Everybody's like trying to optimize out and everything. We don't, we're not doing any optimizing here. We're not doing that. We're trying to loosen it as much as we can. So by loosening the criteria and not confining the pattern, you can discover nuances of a pattern uh, while learning how to give it the flexibility to work best in various circumstances. Huge jump in, in knowledge. You're loosening criteria. So what we just did is an example of that and it can make a staggering difference. Staggering. So um, we showed how to map an indicator to establish a noble outcome and um, but what's required to be able to do that in the first place? Well, most indicators are random. I said that before for a second, yeah. Most indicators are out there are random. They're not mapped. Doesn't mean there's nothing there. It's just mean not mapped, you know? But different kinds of indicators are incapable really of telling you something or being predicted. And uh, we've done prior webinars, you know, uh, order flow is predictive, momentum is predictive. But a lot of times an indicator will even tell you in its name, like moving average. Is a moving average predictive? Well, not by definition, it's not. It's just average. That doesn't mean that things don't move from average or from what I call normal to abnormal. That's a different story. Yeah. So it's super important that you base your trading on something that is not random. In fact, the sequencing in randomness becomes really important. It is important to trade from random to not random and not the other way around. <laughs> Super important. Yeah, there's, a, I didn't put the note on the, on the slide there. Super important. You want to trade from normal to abnormal and not from abnormal to try to go to normal because that's how you lose money. And it has to do with sequencing. So even most price bars are largely random, most are. Smart Super Renko we've been using in the webinar has been mapped to have certain known characteristics. And most of the time bars like um, time-based bars, tick or volume bars in and of themselves are random. And when I say random, I mean like worse than random, like 23% kind of random. Yeah. So, but you're like, okay, well, my bar is random. That's fine. I'll use a moving average. I'll smooth it out. But here's the question. If you're feeding, if your bar type is random, then what are your, what are you feeding your indicators? Like, you know, if you're a parent, you know, do you feed your kids Lucky Charms three meals a day? <laughs> you don't want to feed the Lucky Charms three meals a day because the kids will be all grouchy. You got to put up with it. So make your, make your indicators happy. <laughs> and make your indicators happy and feed them some good food. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's an important concept, super important concept. So identifying other uh, various other words for random, if we know what a random it can uh, help too. Yeah, so um, we use the word average. Nobody wants to have an average trading system. Oh yeah, I, my trading system is based on the average. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's even an indicator of moving average convergence divergence. It's made up of an average that then takes another average and takes the difference between them and then it smooths them by yet another average. <laughs> okay, by the time you get to that, you're so far removed from fundamental shapes that are key to trading, the geometry, that it's kind of difficult to have a good trading system. I'm not saying that it won't work. <laughs> I'm saying the chances are against you. Chances are against you. So these are other words for random, normal, arbitrary, irregular, unplanned, odd, aimless, incidental, indiscriminate. These are not things you wanna be um, controlling your trading. 
Now, you, you start your trade from there, and then you trade into uh, some big explosion or range expansion. That's what you want to do. Yeah. So, um, so what we want to do in trading is trade from um, normal to abnormal, not the other way around. This is why we map the day so we have an idea what it's doing. So we do the same thing, sequencing, all these things are like related concepts, yeah. We want to see if the we have our, our maps, yeah. We want to see if the market's following the map. If I expect 85% of the um, range uh, at a certain time and the market looks like it's going for the edge after that, it looks like it's trying to expand the range when there's only a small percentage of range left. I'm going to treat that very differently than I am if uh, if we're in the earlier part of the day and we're expanding and it says we're expanding. Yeah. Because if it's if it's following the map, then I expect it to follow the map. And if it's not following the map, I don't expect it to follow the map. Yeah, the mapping that I've done. So if I know how the day, uh, day is likely to behave in terms of ranges, shapes, extremes, et cetera, and it's not doing that, I know by definition, I am in an abnormal market condition. Super important. Well, super important. Why is it important to know if I'm trading in abnormal conditions? Because traders don't know how to behave when the market condition is abnormal. They're making trading decisions based on things that they normally see on their chart, much of which is random. It doesn't take much to get these guys randomized. And another key concept is it's always other traders that carry your trade to success. You can't, I, I don't care how you try. <laughs> I know I've tried it. If you ever try to manipulate the market to go in a certain direction, I, you will fail. You just won't do it. You got to get other traders to carry your trade to success. You know? And so what you're doing when you're trading is uh, largely you are positioning yourself such that these people will come in in the future and carry your trade to success. Super important. You know? Super important. So there's a lot of ways that we know if the market's acting normally or not, like with a map. This is, uh, we call this the super map. We already covered certain segments of this. I know that's just like complete overload. I just put the screenshot in there. But we predict ranges, we predict ranges across intervals. There's all kinds of things you can do with this, but that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing. So that map that we just looked at, what can you do with that? It tells me the ranges I should expect. No. It tells me whether I should take out the prior 30 minute period or not. We call that extremes. Now it tells me by how much. Well, that's cool. How by how much? It tells me if I'm likely to expand the range of the day. We already talked about that. It tells me a whole lot of other things. Yeah. Uh, this is the one example of maps that we have for the day. It's shape, range, extremes, in addition to mapping indicators. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another map. This is going to be kind of overwhelming. There's this one I made from today. Yeah. Uh, this is today, uh, eight four. Okay, you see, I circled these areas. This is this is telling me that the market in a period, one hundred percent, is going to take out the prior five periods, and then B period is going to do it at ninety percent. That's what that's telling me. I know it could be confusing, but I'm telling you that's what it says. Yeah, and then I'm going to go from B period to D period at ninety percent, and then I'm going to go from F period to uh, I period at eighty percent. And then I'm going to go from um, uh, I, sort of I, J, K, what happened there? Uh, I put that circle in the wrong place. It's supposed to be one higher. I'm going to go I, J, K at 80%. Yeah, I, J, K at 80%. So what I did was that map tells me, okay, am I likely to have a trend? Yeah, am I going to sequence out this pat? This period is followed by expansion, and this period is followed by expansion in that period. That's what I was showing you there. Are there other things on that map? There are. Yeah, it tells me what parts of the day are more likely to bear fruit. It tells me if a range is protected. It tells me if I'm likely to take out prior ranges and how far back. It tells me other things. So uh, I'm going to be teaching a. Uh, teaching more about this kind of mapping in the stock index trading room in the near future. Yeah. But this is what that looks like. So uh, that first circle, this is today's uh, CL chart. You can do the same thing in any other market you know, in the stock index. 
Bill said, A period is going to take out the prior five periods. What are the prior five periods? One, two, three, four, five. This is A period, the first period of the day. We had a statistics that is going to take out the prior five at 100%. That's what it did. I said there's going to be 165 ticks of range, as I recall. You know, I predict it in two dimensions with that. Yeah, you know, I predict it in other ways as well. Now, said B was going to take out the prior five at 90%. That was also, you know, it's these circles, yeah, 90% right there. Yeah. Yeah, just showing you some examples of how this uh, plays out. I said C period, the third period of the day was expected to expand the range at 60% and it did not, it stayed inside. Yeah. And then D period expects to be the other end of that sequence at 90%. That's exactly what happened, it went lower. Yeah. I didn't have one for this segment. Uh, FTH uh, I was uh, 90%. Um, H made the low right there, um, but it expected to have 175 ticks of range. And then uh, it had already met that. And when it already meets that, these probabilities will drop off. And it came back inside. We had 100%, uh, I think, for IJK to be a sequence I, J, K, higher, higher. So this is a mapping for the day and today in crude oil. Yeah, pretty cool. I hope I hope you can see that. So um, we made other, you know, other predictions off these maps. I'm just covering a couple of the ways that we use them. Um, mapping can also help you to make it can help you to make great trading decisions. And I, personally, I won't trade without a map. It's just way too cool. Traders who make a lot, um, the traders that make a lot in my experience, the ones that just like, I mean, massive amounts of money um, use mapping. In fact, I learned this uh, mapping originally over 20, 25 years ago uh, from a guy who, who taught this concept to me. And then I was so baffled by it. I was obsessed with how to figure out how to do it. Uh, but um, that a guy was an accountant, he was make, pulling down a million dollars a year in the S&P, this is like 25, um, maybe even close to 30 years ago. And he taught me how he maps, he like, had these transparencies of, of charts um, that he laid over his screen. And in the beginning, that's how I did it. Yeah, and it's been, you know, every day we expand our knowledge in mapping, so. Um, so then you combine these things with the things on the chart and uh, it all ba bases together and gives you a, a high probability for success. That's the idea. Can you screw it up? Sure. But um, as you do it and begin to understand it, it it's really pretty cool. So, um, so as much as a, a map can help you to know what direction to trade in, it can also tell you where to be cautious or where not to trade is when traders in various groups that make up a market cannot interpret what's happening, as we already said, their trading behavior will become more random or they'll sit out and that's not the best combination. So when you're not following your map, that's really a good thing to know. So it's two, it works two ways. When it's following the map, it's like, whoa, that's awesome. When it's not following the map, uh, go get a bagel. <laughs> yeah, so, um, uh, we discussed the prior articles from Traders World on Momentum. So here's a little system I'll share with you. Yeah, we already kind of covered this a bit. Yeah. I thought, let's throw a little system in here that uh, is a two based on two things. Yeah, so trade on the second trap trader oscillator hook where the smart momentum slope has remained constant over the entire interval since the prior one. That's the prior one. And this is what that looks like. Yeah. Now, the smart momentum slope is constant and you get the hook. The smart momentum slope is constant and you get the hook. The smart momentum slope is constant and this one traps you out. Yeah, you get the hook. Now, smart momentum slope is constant and you get the hook, inside, inside hook. Smart momentum slope is constant and you get the hook, inside hook. What does that mean? It means the order flow is driving higher while the price is going lower. Yeah. Way cool. Yeah, that's called a hook and pull. And these are the system results I did for you a couple of weeks ago. 
couple days. Yeah. Is this a guarantee of future result? Absolutely not. Could you screw this up? You could have a system that's this good and screw it up. Are there certain places that you'd prefer to trade this? I, this is just this is just those two rules. I might not trade this as is. I'm probably going to be interpreting that in terms of my maps and taking the trades that are in the direction of what is expected. Yeah. But this is a basic uh, hook and pull system. I've uh, been, you know, this thing tests out. I've been doing this for six, eight months now. Yeah. So could that system be improved? Well, you look at it and you're like, well, that's crazy, Rob. That's really incredible little system. Yeah. But yeah, it could. And like I said, uh, so one way I could do it, I could take, uh, I could not take trades where the trap trader oscillator was three dots against me. We were covered with three dot pattern, yeah. In other ways, yeah, how about another? Oh, only trade with the trend. That's a big one for us. Yeah, know what the trend is. Well, how do you know the trend? Two ways, structure or the smart price band. Smart price band, pretty simple. Yeah. So let's review some concepts. Yeah, man, I've, I've, I've told so many, I've told you guys so many things, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot. So, um, but you'll have the recording. So, uh, so let's cover a uh, review of concepts. Okay, knowing and understanding that basic geometry and shapes are the key that sit at the base of everything. Yeah, you can't solve a problem on the level of a problem. So make sure that you're operating at least one level above. When you start doing mapping, you're actually operating on two or three levels above the, um, the chart itself. Yeah, you can map shapes, you can map patterns, you can map periods of the day, and you can establish statistics using the methods that we showed using trade markers, for example, and you get uh, some basic stats on that. And I'd like to take nothing less than 75% yeah, from the different quadrants, order flow, momentum, price action, et cetera, targeting, mapping. Um, a singularity of focus yeah, from that higher level viewpoint is often the key to success. And that means you can't watch 23 of these things at the same time. And, and the fact of the matter is when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, it's simplicity. In fact, in 30 years of doing this, the best systems I've ever seen are super simple. We just made a hook and pull. It was like two things. Yeah. Crazy simple. Crazy simple. But I like to throw the mapping in there so I know what the big picture is. Crazy simple. I know all this because I just rammed like 30 years of knowledge down your throat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But um, what you see, as I said earlier, you trade what you see. So whatever you got out of this webinar, even though I said, you know, 60 things, what you got out of it is what you got, and that's what you use. And then if, you know, if these other concepts become, you know, bubbling up in your consciousness, that's cool too. And um, finally, don't be hoodwinked by randomness. That's huge, by the way. You know, loosen criteria. You know, sequencing matters. Uh, focus on one thing, and the thing it's the thing that you see. Tell me if you could see any there. I'll cover some of these questions in a minute. If Keith doesn't kick me out. Okay, I haven't mentioned trade markers much in this webinar. We use it to compile the results of these methods in just a few minutes. Trade markers is a very powerful tool for identifying context where trading probabilities stack using Bayes, both simultaneously and progressively. Very, the, trade markers was a huge game changer for us. Huge game changer. It also works powerfully in conjunction with Bloodhound. I can export, if I code something in Bloodhound, I can export it into trade markers and analyze it. Huge, huge. 
I can also fiddle with the um, results, yeah, and hone in on what uh, works about it or doesn't. Huge yeah, trademarkers. Another important topic, it's easy to get a trading tool that has, you know, how easy is it to get a 75% pattern? Well, I've showed, shown you a couple of them, but um, if you're just starting from anywhere, uh, it's like impossible. It's impossible. Thanks, Keith. So I've mentioned before, most indicators are random, not, you know, I mean, indicators that are random are random. But then at the same time, you want to trade from random to non-random. Yeah, so there's a place for random indicators. Yeah. Can be. Uh, one of the things having to do with random uh, trading from normal to abnormal, these crosses, yeah, I want to talk, look, if, the, if we call the crosses of this indicator normal, yeah, it's balanced, right? Same thing with the trap trader oscillator, that line in the middle, when you were hooking that middle, hook in the middle, we call that a midline hook. Yeah, what you're doing there when you're watching and trading off of uh, midline hook kind of scenarios and crosses of the momentum, you're trying to trade from normal to abnormal. You wanna trade from normal to the outer boundaries, from normal to the outer boundaries, or from the outer boundaries crossing and then, you know, you gotta contextualize those though, you know, gotta contextualize those, so. Um, and I lost my place. Yeah. So, so it takes time to find these if you're going to find them on your own. Now, what happens is if you, if you stay singular, what will happen is the patterns will reveal themselves to you way faster than they will if you try and take on four or five of them at the same time. That's why I said it's super important. You've got to do what you see. I taught a T2 pattern. I've done all kinds of webinars on it. If you guys have been to my webinars, there's a guy in the trading room who's the most skilled trader I've ever seen. Been there since day one. And it took him a year and a half. This is a guy that's got an IQ that's like way up there, okay? This has nothing to do with intelligence. It took him a year and a half to see a T2 pattern on the smart momentum. Year and a half. Yeah has nothing to do with intelligence or anything else. He saw it when he was ready to see it. Yeah. He saw it when he was ready to see it. That's all there is to it. It has nothing to do with intelligence or how cool you are or anything else. So trade what you see. Yeah. Because it might take a year and a half to see it. <laughs> but when you see it, you can't unsee it. Everything changes. Yeah. Sometimes you walk in. We were talking about this in the trading room today. Sometimes you walk in. You look at a chart. Um, you know, you did a study or something, you're doing something in trade markers and you're like, okay, you, you really had a realization about something and suddenly all the charts look different. What's that all about? Suddenly all the charts look different. You see things that you never saw before. Yeah. And then what's crazy is you go back. We got, I got um, eight years of charts uh, on, the, on the room. Um, I've saved every single chart since the beginning of the trading room. Eight years of charts. You go back and you start looking over all the eight years of charts. The pattern was there all along. What's that all about? Yeah. Well, when you see it, you see it. And you can't, once you do see it, you can't unsee it. Uh, what is that? It's where you made it your own. It's yours. You own it. Yeah, nobody can take it away from you. So, so you know, you ask the question, are you using indicators that are random? Most of them are. Or do you have uh, indicators that have known follow through rates? You know? uh, it takes time. You know? And it comes when it comes. It's got no, you can't force it. But um, it just is like layers of an onion peeling off and, and when you look back. You know, so. so if you don't know if your indicators can't stand on their own with known stats, then it's a likely a good idea to get mapping or. Um, or you know, get something that's already been mapped for you. Yeah. So 
Uh, some of the actual historical theoretical follow through rates for these indicators um, uh, we've been using our orders of magnitude past 75, but I just use it 75. Yeah. You know, you know, we talked about that earlier, but it took me decades before I was able to come up with these things. I started with geometry. I just became obsessed with, with the shapes that were happening on the charts. Man, it took so long, guys. I cannot tell you so long to be able to see um, these different patterns that I teach these days. Yeah, years and years and years, decades to, to see it. Lots of migraine headaches. <laughs> yeah, because you can't make it happen. It'll just come when it comes. You know, you wake up, you're having a dream. You're like, oh my God, you wake up. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> I need to go look at a chart. <laughs> Well, thankfully, I got them on the, you know, and pull the charts up on my phone and I'll go look at the charts, you know. So, so these indicators I use are distinctively different from most normal trading indicators because they have solid proven science behind them. And that's happened because every single day we use them, other members use them, they say, hey, well, I found this. You know, oh, whoa. I've never thought about that before. Yeah, room members and stuff. Yeah, so so we've covered proven system building theory and applications using smart pattern trading system of tools from Indicator Smart. Yeah, we use the Smart Super Renko. We use the Trap Trader Oscillator, the Smart Momentum, Smart Breakpoints. We also use the Smart uh, Price Band and uh, Smart Trade Markers uh, uh, to do the stats and the mapping of the indicators. All that from Indicator Smart. Yeah. So we've covered how to use your research to stack with other systems and other methods and the quadrants and everything. But due to the brevity of the webinar, we can't cover everything because I could just keep talking about this stuff forever. I could. You know. But at some point I gotta go get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. So um so there's a lot of other patterns that we teach and I keep teaching them and going over them in different ways. And the ones that you see, you see them and, and you work with that. So many of these have really good theoretical hit rates, predictive value, and you can add them using um, a Bayes theorem. Yeah. So trading like this, there's nothing like uh, doing this. There's a whole science that we've developed over these, all these years. So, yeah. Um, join us in the trading room, learn more, and check out Indicator Smart, um, the Smart Patterns Trading System, Trading Indicators and Tools in the webinar. Oil Trading Room, the live application of these concepts. Yeah. Uh, here's just some uh, comments, recent comments. I don't, I don't post everything that people uh, send to me, but people, you know, often tell me. Um, how doing this stuff changed their life. Does that mean that you just get it for free? No, because the way I teach is I teach you to fish. I teach you to fish. I teach independence or from a viewpoint of that. You know, super important. So, um, so uh, let's go over to Indicator Smart for a second. This is uh, Indicator Smart. Um, here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to go over and, um, and opt in here and make sure you're on our list. Yeah. And um, you opt into that, you're going to get a free uh, heat map indicator for NinjaTrader 8. And you get special benefits offers, cutting edge trading webinars like this crazy one. Yeah. So just put in your name, email, submit that. Uh, we don't share that with anybody. And that makes sure you're informed. Also, go over to uh, the YouTube channel. Yeah, go over to the YouTube channel. Um, that way. And um, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe to the channel. And that will keep you informed when I post different things, you know, different ideas and concepts you know, that we post there. 
but make sure an opt-in at indicator smart so you get the indicator and and you um, and we can inform you when we're having events and stuff like that. And uh, you also get uh, coupon codes. I'm going to give you some coupon codes in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the oil trading room. Yeah, I teach these things. We also have the stock index trading room, but the oil trading room specifically is taught by me. Yeah, using these methods, and I uh, use the coupon code there, Black Gold Two Forty Nine. I think give that to you in a minute. Yeah. So, uh, but go to Indicator Smart, sign up there. YouTube channel, sign up there. Here's some coupon codes for you at Indicator Smart. And if you want to learn more um, in a live trading environment uh, where we cover these concepts in detail every day in all different ways, uh, use coupon code BLACKGOLD249. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that's, thanks Rochester Mortgage. <laughs> uh, that's the YouTube channel. And um, here's uh, indicator smart. Yeah, thanks for asking me to do that. Um, okay, let me check the questions um, and make sure. Um, well, Bloodhound is uh, that's Keith. Yeah, Bloodhound is an amazing product, by the way, guys. Amazing, yeah, because you can code any of these kinds of things we're talking about. And if you have it, you drop it in trademarkers, do the analysis and stuff. Like I said, huge, big game changer. Um, but uh, Bloodhound's shark indicators, yeah. So, um, yeah, so uh, the maps are computed for every day. Yeah, there's that. That's a whole. That could be a whole webinar unto itself. How you can compute maps um, in different um, different intervals. Yeah, like uh, for example, we looked at the fact that there's a different ways that you could slice this, or that I could describe. We do a whole webinar on that. We, we're showing like 86 percent of the day is uh, range expansion happens before E period, right? Yeah. Well, you can map just that interval, and we do. Yeah, A through E, E through K. Yeah, all different kinds of mapping, intervals and uh, ways of doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, mapping is not something that, you know, I just showed you all different kinds of mapping things. Some people just look at it and they go, okay, I get it. And other people would be like, oh, wow, that's really complicated. Um, that's what we do in the trading room. That's why you can't buy the mapping software. Um, I wouldn't even be sure how to do it, but um, we use the map live in the trading room and I'm in telling you how I'm doing it live. Yeah, that's how that gets taught. So uh, one of the ways, Neil, to define trend, Neil asked, how do you define trend? Yeah, well, the smart price band is one way of doing that. Yeah, but another way of doing it, um, that's super important is ABCD structure. ABCD structure. And that is how I would prefer that you learn it. Yeah. Like, you know, you could ask the question, well, is this trend, is this uptrend here still intact? Um, so we use something called reference structure. And in fact, it is. Yeah. In fact, this trend is still intact. But the smart price band did turn red there. Yeah, to turn red there. There you get a cyan dot right there. Is this trend still intact? Yeah, it totally it is. So, um, but as long as you're getting lower red reversal bars, um, that is a, a intact structure. Even if it traps that uh, that one right there, the structure is still intact. When this goes higher right here, you get three higher green reversals and the trend is now up. But um, that's that's the gist of it. Uh, the smart price band can help you to do that. 
but understanding where you are in terms of structure, you're trapping the structure right here. Yeah. And like I told you, so you're forming a you're forming a five tick trap to here and you're forming a five tick trap to here. Or this one, this chart's the ES. Yeah. And so I'll call that a four tick trap because these are four, four tick bars. Yeah. You're four tick trapping the four tick trap right there. And while the uh, trap trader is telling you it's going higher. So this structure is still intact. But the smart price band can't do that. Um, can't do that. But when you get this long leg right here, this leg is longer than these other legs. This is another thing about structure. You actually expect two legs against the trend. Doesn't always happen. You'll see it here. This, this leg is longer. And see, you'll get this inside, and then you five tick trap at this edge, and then you come back up inside. You end up getting a form of two higher reds inside this prior structure. Yeah. Anyways, that can get complicated too, but that's our training in our members area on the oil trading room is all wrapped around learning that kind of structure. It applies in any market. So, uh, but that's the simplest way to define the trend is with the smart price band. Um, Keith, would we have, uh, how many is asking about showing a trade? Actually, I think we covered, I think we covered that, I mean, this, this whole thing, this, uh, this is just what we did the map, you know, any trade. So you expected this to, you expected this to break lower. So you've been taking short trades during this period. You know, this one didn't have high stats with it. You know, short trades, short trades, short trades all through here. Yeah. yeah, this is all consistent with the map. So yeah, we already covered that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks, Ira. Yeah, so, uh, all right, guys, again, go over to the website um, and be sure to uh, get your free indicator and everything. And that's what I've got. Yeah. Any other questions before we wrap it up, guys? All right. Very cool. Yeah, Rob, maybe uh, maybe show the slide right before that where you had all the, the codes. Maybe people can take a screenshot of that. Uh, oh, well, wherever it was. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the only place you have the codes on here. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, if you're at all interested, which based on what I'm seeing in the chat, <laughs> I'm pretty sure quite a lot of you are interested in, in what, uh, what Rob is up to. As, as is the case pretty much every time you present. <laughs> People like what you do, so pretty cool. Um, not, to, uh, not to bogart the, uh, the conversation, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but um, I just wanted to mention, someone asked about uh, what Bloodhound is, and I'm not gonna uh, explain it in detail because there's two really good ways to learn. Um, first of all, let me bring you here. Um, yes, definitely subscribe to Rob's channel, but if you go, if you want to learn what Bloodhound, just like high level, what we do, there's a two minute video on youtube.com slash shark indicators. Um, let me actually put that into the chat really quick for you in case you're curious, um, because we, we try to let our presenters do their thing. So we haven't really talked about Bloodhound besides what they do. Um, but yeah, learn what it does. Uh, and then that's perfect because when you come in tomorrow, tomorrow's presentation is an introduction of what Bloodhound is, and it leads into the major update that we're launching tomorrow, um, which if you're new to it, you won't really get to appreciate fully just how much of a change it is, but uh, it's, it's, it's going to be kind of nice. So, um, all right. So beyond that, um, here's the details, 4 p.m. tomorrow and uh, just come on in and join us. Uh, and again, if you, uh, we are at the end of our guest presentations for the week. Thank you so much for everybody who, quite a few of you actually came to every, um, every presentation. So appreciate your, your um, involvement there and, and your great questions to everybody and all that. Um, sharkweek.cc is the domain that will get you here. Go to the replays link up at the top and that's where you can find all the different replays if you missed anything from any of the presenters, um, including whatever special offers they have or, or whatever, it should all be in there. Um, Rob's will be up, today's will be up within the next about three, four hours, just need to get it uh, processed and, and posted. Yeah, um, I liked what you were saying about uh, pattern recognition, like you, you won't see it until you see it and then you can't unsee it. 
Um, I, I like that. He, the human brain is a pattern recognition machine. <laughs> and it kind of makes me think of, of like uh, trying to learn a language. It's really hard until it just kind of clicks. And then somehow you understand what you've learned. Yeah. And, and, and you know what's amazing about that, Keith, is that you can learn a language fully. I mean, think about how many words that you use every day that you never looked up in a dictionary. Nobody ever told you what they are, but you know what they are. What's the deal with that? Right. But um, a lot of times when we talk about this stuff in the, in the training, in the daily lectures and whatnot, uh, we talk about it as a language. It has syntax. It has all the properties of language. And I have a background um, in college. I have in um, uh, linguistics and, um, and yeah, all these things, all the geometry of it and everything else is all very language oriented. So yeah, it's a very cool subject. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. just trying to study Spanish on Duolingo, so it's uh, not not quite that as that advanced. But I, I don't even mention the language learning thing to to people because I've learned it can kind of scare some people off, at least when talking about our products, because they're like, "Oh, learning Bloodhound is as hard as learning a language." And I'm like, "Oh crap, that's not what I meant." <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Bloodhound's pretty easy to wrap your I, brain around. I know. So that's... Tova's asking. <laughs> You know, that's exactly what it is, Tova. You can code stuff visually uh, without having to, you know, know how to do C sharp code. Yeah, you're not technically coding things. Some people think that you're actually producing like a uh, code itself. Um, rather, a good way to think of it is is uh, kind of like uh, like Neo in the Matrix. You know, you, you know, one one day you won't even need to dodge the bullet, right? You don't even need to code for most people discover that they don't need to code if they're using Bloodhound because really the goal people, when I, when I ask them and start digging in, like, what are you, what are your actual goals? Do you want to learn C-sharp? Do you want to uh, build an actual indicator? They're, they're like, no, I, I, when I'm in the trade, I struggle with the, the sort of my psychology getting frantic and making bad decisions, even though I have a system. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you just need a way to, to say, here's here are my conditions for when to get into the trade and here is what i plan to do during the trade and let's put that in and automate as much as i'm comfortable with that's mm -hmm. what these tools do so. mm -hmm. yeah and it's that that's right on and like for me i actually i've taken classes in c sharp and everything i can read c sharp code but i haven't coded i never coded in it and so to me, like the syntax, the details, the subtleties, all those things, I don't know how to do that. Um, but like for me, Bloodhound is just like, you know, sometimes I get caught in a little thing and I got to mess around with it for a while, but it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, if you've ever done any kind of programming before, you know, maybe back in the day you programmed some base or if you've ever done anything like that at all, Bloodhound's a breeze, I think. Yeah, the, the mindset that come the, the logical mindset that comes from having programming experience does help. Um, but by no means is it necessary. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. All right, Keith. Well, hey, thanks for uh, having me in for the presentation. I hope uh, everybody enjoyed it. It looks like some, some people enjoyed it. And, um, like it. but uh, again, thanks for having me on board. Thanks to Shark Indicators for doing this. Yeah. Yeah, we love having you. Thank you so much, Rob. Uh, if there's nothing else from you guys, we'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so cool. much. See you yeah, then. Thank you. Bye.